Welcome back to Man V Film. This is my first review for a Cauldron release, Beyond Terror, a 1980 Spanish horror movie. as one of those uh, films I, I recently got from my friend Joe and I didn't know anything about it. Throwing it on and this is a hard, hard movie. Brings up these characters that are just horrible. Really just terrible characters. So nihilistic, so hate-filled so uh, just raging against the machine that he just uh, I didn't know what was happening in the movie where it was going I knew one thing I really didn't like the characters within this movie you open up to one of our main kind of characters Lola as she's kind of going on a date with a guy out uh, into the wilderness for a I don't know what uh, when she suddenly just starts to brutally stab him stealing all his money and leaving him for dead in the wilderness so that she can facilitate her drug habit for her and her brother. These two are part of a four-man group led by Kema and together they're just going to go on a rampage throughout this movie doing some of the most obnoxious and horrible things I've seen on film. They go to a truck stop and they decide to rob everybody, attacking and insulting people and ultimately killing a few and taking some hostages as well. And they go on the run taking the hostage's car, these six people squeeze into it and are off down the beaten track. So far, so horrible, so terrible, so nihilistic, so destructive. Um, I, I really wasn't on board for this movie, in fact I found I was uh, sort of raging against it as I followed these characters on their nihilistic trail through Spain. Uh, ultimately they find a young uh, a cottage uh, and they take refuge there. By just breaking in, there's an old woman and her grandson there and throughout events that happen, they end up setting fire to the cottage and letting the old woman and the child burn to death. But that's not an ordinary old woman. No, 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 no. She is a satanic cult member who pledges her faith to Satan and asks him for retribution against these people that have wronged her. And that's only half an hour into the movie. Half an hour into the movie and already I have a group of characters that I really can't stand who every turn seem to surprise me with their horrible movements, uh, their horrible actions and their just disgusting nature. These are off-putting characters. Characters who feel very realistic. A lot of the language that's used throughout the movie feels very naturalistic. It doesn't feel stilted or written. There is a liberal use of swearing throughout the film that feels very natural. The conversations that I have heard in my life, the way that the swearing is used is not for emphasis or, or to harden a point. It's used as almost punctuation or... Uh, to link sentences together. It's, it's just very typical of that. You follow these characters to a church where they become uh, very blasphemous, uh, tearing down almost everything that they can, destroying the church, uh, having salacious acts on the building to kind of even more damn themselves. And from then on, it just becomes a case of them being supernaturally haunted uh, and murdered by uh, an external force that we sometimes see, sometimes don't. And it becomes um, a movie that is, that's, that worms its way under your skin. It's the only way to say about this. Now, I, I'm very down on the movie so far. That's not to say I didn't like it. That's just to say that I did not like the characters. Ultimately, their, their, their fates have been sealed by the actions that they've delivered throughout the movie and it's all about watching them being tormented to realising that they have ruined any choice uh, or chance that they have had in life by taking this horrible path that they have been on, by doing some horrible things to each other, by just living their lives in this terrible manner and their comeuppance is bloody, it's torturous in, in psychological ways and ultimately watching these people just fade to their demise is terrific. There's the reoccurring character of the small boy that they burned in the house, which they never realise, who's just there to kind of torment them as well at certain moments. Beyond Terror is... 
It's a very interesting movie. It's one that I, I can say that I didn't like a lot of what was going on, but my ultimate appreciation for the movie was definitely there. I want to know more about it. I want to go and listen to the Cat Ellinger uh, commentary because I'm sure that'll be super insightful. I want to read more about the movie. It looked tremendous on this disc. I had a great transfer and the audio was amazing as well. The score was pretty terrific. It's a movie that has definitely left its mark on me and it's one that I, I will think about a lot. I'll go back to it often, I think. Uh, I can't say that I loved it. I can't say that I liked the movie. Uh, very off-putting, very um, sort of raging against the viewer at certain to times, trying to be... Um, antagonistic almost with, with the viewer but I kind of like the challenging nature that it has within it very odd, unusual, supernatural uh, tale that kind of mixes Eurocrime, Giallo and supernatural horror all together uh, definitely worth checking out definitely worth seeing if you kind of like the idea of this movie I hope you get your hands on it. I hope you like it as much as I did. I'd love to know your thoughts on uh, Beyond Terror, if you have seen it. I'd like to know if it's similar to mine or, or what you got from the movie. Let me know in the comment box. Of course, if you want to see more of my content, there is some videos up here that you can click on to check out. Like the video, share the video, it all helps me. If you want, you can join the membership program for some exclusive content, or you can join Patreon where you can just support me Thanks very much. I'll see you next time on Man V Film.